Hi everybody, I'm Associate Professor Patria Redmond and I'm on the couch today here with Professor Norm Vaughan from Mount Royal University, Canada. And Norm, thanks very much for taking the time to have a chat with us today. Wonderful, I'm very excited to be here. So today we are going to be talking about blended learning. So to start with Norm, what do you see as your definition of blended learning? Patria, I think this is a very important question because based on my experience, I've discovered that blended learning means many different things for many different people. So I think it's very important at the beginning of any course or program to really engage students in a conversation about what their concept of blended learning is. My experience suggests that blended learning really is the integration of asynchronous and synchronous learning opportunities or the opportunity to blend formal with informal learning activities. And I think this is important because often my experience again suggests that students equate class time, physical class time or synchronous time if you're online with learning, whereas they often don't think of the opportunities to reflect or work collaboratively outside of class time. So some of those back channel discussions that they might have at a coffee shop or in Facebook or in other places, still part of the learning process? Still part of the learning process and I think this is another important point you made, that we need to connect and draw those experiences in because that's often a challenge with blended learning is that you get certain activities, certain discussions happening in the classroom and other ones outside of the classroom and our role, and I'll talk about that shortly, is to really help students integrate and link those conversations so that they see that learning is happening all the time. Okay, thanks. So the concept of student engagement is something that you're very passionate about. How do you see that um, relating to blended learning? And again, this I think is important because my experience is I was originally a geologist before I became an educator. Um, so I really am conditioned to transmitting information to people. I think that's one of my issues is I like to talk, but I'm always not the best at listening. And I think what's really important is that we need for the students to see themselves in their learning process and that they have a voice. So what I've found is so important about blended learning is it provides different access points for students to find themselves and to really get excited about learning. So for example, I find it's important to create an environment where students can create a sense of relevance. They can see themselves in the learning process and they can get excited about the different concepts and questions in our discipline. The second thing that I found important, and again, I think it's part of the gaming or the digital generation, is they like to be pushed out of their comfort zone. And this is why I think they enjoy um, digital games so much. So we have to create um, environments where students are challenged um, but the challenge is reachable. It, it doesn't crush their self-concept, but it forces them to grow and develop. So we've got the sense of relevance, we've got that rigor, and again, we live in an age where through the use of digital technologies, all kinds of opportunities to collaborate and communicate with people, not just in the university, but out in the workplace or in the community as well. And so that relevance and authenticity part of that um, I think is important for learners no matter what age, no matter what discipline. It's really a, a cross-disciplinary idea of how to make sure that we have engagement with our students. And I think this is so important that no matter the age or whatever, because again, one of my biggest issues, and I'll be honest, my background like you is K-12 to teaching, but the disconnect that often happens between K-12 to education and higher education. And again, I don't want to be critical, but often the assessment process in K-12 to is very independent and there's a lot of standardized testing. Whereas when we get to university, we want students to think and collaboratively work together and solve problems. And we do get a bit of kickback though, don't we? When we create group assignments or collaborative experiences that they don't necessarily have the skills to disagree in a polite way, perhaps. And, and again, I think this is why blended learning can potentially really help students transition from a K-12 to to a higher education environment to create safe places for them to learn how to engage successfully in the groups because my experience is we can tell students to do things, we can write it down, but at least uh, until they experience it firsthand, they don't get it. Mm. 
And as a, as a teacher, what do you think our role is in a blended learning environment and how might that be different blend in a blended environment versus a face-to-face -face environment or is there really no difference? Well, I think this is a really good question and I think it's really important um, that we examine our own teaching practice. And again, I'm all for, for, for the student learning, but if we're really going to create an engagement environment, I think it needs to be a learning environment where we're all learning, including us as teachers. And again, I, a little late to the game as, as being a teacher, so I've really had to examine my roles. And the three things that I really see critical is that we really are creating an intentional design for the learning experience. And what I mean by that is the outcomes, what we want students to achieve through the learning environment, we're aligning it with our feedback mechanisms. And I think what's important is that we're relying not just on our conversations or our feedback with students, but we're helping students develop their own metacognitive framework so that they can actually assess their own learning. And most important, they can give constructive feedback to each other in a safe environment. So that's the first rule, I think, is the design, then the organization of the course, because my experience is each course, each group of students we have is unique based on their personalities. So we can have a pre-design going in, but then we need to be able to react and be able to shape the learning experience based on the personality and the needs of the learners we have. The second thing I want to discuss is this idea, and we often hear of it, you know, a guide on the side versus a sage on the stage. And I don't think it's one or the other, I think it's both. So in terms of facilitation, it's not just being a guide on the side, it's really modeling for students what a, learning, what a learner is in a blended learning environment. And this is important because you're learning not just in the classroom, but you're learning out of the classroom, especially in an online environment. This is often a new environment for our students. And in Canada, we have a term pathological politeness is they don't know how to react to that online environment where they can't see someone. So they're just naturally Canadian and they want to make sure everybody's happy. And so we really need to work with them and model as teachers critical discourse so that we can actually agree to disagree. I still love you, Patria, but we're going to have a discussion about this particular issue. And finally, something that we need to hold on to is we are the subject matter experts. That's why we're at universities. That's why we've got these advanced graduate degrees. And students are looking for that expertise. So again, as we're going through, it's not just being this, this guide on the side. It's being the captain of the ship. And often I find with first-year students, they often have a lot of misconceptions and there's a lot of on learning that needs to be placed mm -hmm. and they need a strong hand. So the three roles, again, just to summarize, is the design, the facilitation, and this idea of leadership or direct instruction. I think as the, the content experts that we are though, we probably need to acknowledge that we're never going to know it all now. The fact that knowledge is changing so rapidly and there will be times when we learn with and from our students versus being only the content expert. And I think this is important that we need to realize that, that we are working in partnership with our students. And um, Terry Anderson, who was our federal chair of distance education in Canada, coined the term teaching rather than teacher presence. So in a true community, what we're doing is sharing that responsibility. And as we go through the course, we're giving more opportunities for students to facilitate and direct the learning of each other. Great, thanks. And just to, to wrap up, you're doing some research in yes. blended learning at the moment. So what are some of the key findings that you're finding in your context? And, and I think this is important because, again, um, we often hear of, of different terms, you know, mobile learning, blended learning, flipped classrooms. And I think it's important that as we're experimenting and we're looking at different approaches to learning, we're actually collecting data and seeing if it makes a difference. And just um, with blended learning, I think it's important that we're collecting it not just from the student perspective, but also from the faculty or the teachers as well as the administrators so that we're getting sort of a 360 degree perspective. So just quickly, um, some of the findings we've found from a student perspective is that uh, first time is probably the most difficult. And again, I think we are talking about the shift in roles and responsibilities is that students are used to receiving a lot of information and then sending it back to us, usually through a standardized exam. So this idea of them taking more roles and responsibilities for themselves is something they need to learn how to do. 
So we found in terms of student support, it's not just the digital technologies. They need a lot of support in terms of study and especially time management. So that's been a key finding for us is building those activities and building those opportunities for them to learn to manage their time within the initial courses in higher education. From a faculty perspective, it's been really interesting. And again, we're similar to students. We do what we're rewarded to do. And at a lot of universities, we're rewarded for our research and not so much for our teaching. So listen, I'm a faculty member as well, but I'm going to go where I'm going to get reward and recognition. And also, I'm a bit risk adverse. Many of us faculty members in higher education have no formal experience or training with teaching. So already it's a bit of an awkward thing. So that's the first thing I think we have to overcome is the risk factor. To realize faculty, you're not doing this on a loan, we support you and the university is going to reward and recognize your effort. Which leads me to the next point around administration. And I think this is so important, and I've seen this as an issue at so many institutions, is, is listen, I've been an administrator myself, but often the faculty talk about the flavor of the month or the trend of the month. And I've seen this happen, that senior administration go to another university or a conference, hear that this institution X or Y is doing blended learning, therefore we should do it as well. Mm -hmm. With no rationale, there's no tie to the vision, the mission of the institution, and faculty and students get upset. None of us like to be told what to do and if we can't see how that's already linking to our existing practice, it falls apart. So my message and my um, findings with administration, that if you are adopting a blended approach to teaching and learning, it needs to be directly linked and tied to the mission and to the vision of the institution. Some of the things that you speak about remind me, I talk to my students about eco-shock. So if they've come from one discipline yes. to another, from a K to 12 a to higher ed, or even from face to face to online, they're going to have this, like a cultural shock. It is going to be different from them. They probably won't perform at the level that they're used to. And it does raise some high anxiety in some students. And just to build on that, because again, this is a field that I have no experience on, but I'm learning I'm gonna to need to know more is around change management and leadership, because I think, I haven't heard that term before, I think that's brilliant, the eco-shock, because uh, I'll be honest, the, the concept, the idea of higher education institutions has been around for a long time, and these institutions, including us, are very resistant to change. And so I think the process really does to be, need to be managed and intentional, and that we all feel safe, but we also feel that we've got I hate using that term skin in the dame, but we've got a voice. It's not being done to us. We're part of the change process. Okay, well, thanks very much, Norm. Now, if people are interested in catching up with you, making contact with you um, when you leave here and head back to Canada, what's the best way for them to find you? The best way to find me, and this does sound a little, a little egotistical, but if you can spell my last name, so my first name's Norm, but the last name is the critical one. It's V-A-U-G-H-A-N. Believe it or not, if you Google Norm Vaughn, I'll come up in the top 10 of Google every time. And that's probably the easiest way is just Google me and send an email. And I do. This is part of my mandate this year. I'm on a, a year-long study or research leave, really trying to understand um, the different perspectives and ideas that people have to different approaches to teaching and learning around the world. So I'd be very excited for people to contact me. Okay, well, thank you very much, Norm, for joining us. Welcome to USQ, and thanks, everybody, for watching. Goodbye.